today we'll take a look at the landmarks very important features of some bones mammalian bones you know that mammals have similar bones here we have the lumbar vertebra that's the one we find in the abdomen this is actually that of rabbit here is the scapula of rabbit and over there is the spine of the scapula that should be the spine of the scapula these are the fossa here is actually the infraspinous fossa the other one that should be the media border then you have the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa which articulates with the head of the humerus to form ball and socket joint as you can see this is actually the skeleton of a rabbit so you see the head of the humerus of a rabbit articulating with the glenoid cavity and you can also see the coracoid process beside the glenoid cavity and this forms ball and socket joint which allows 360 degrees movement then we are here to analyze the scapula that is the subscapular fossa that is the subscapular fossa then okay we'll look at another set of uh, bone and over here i told you earlier is the lumbar vertebra which is the most stout vertebra and it is found in the abdomen of course uh, let's now critically analyze this very well okay over there you can see that's the neural canal for the passage of the spinal cord so you can now see the transverse process that should be the neural spine that's it in the middle neural spine then that should be the metapophysis the transverse process the two things surrounding the neural spine is the metapophysis then still showing the neural canal for the passage of the spinal cord and that gives it one of its functions just like other bones in the vertebral column protection of the spinal cord that's the metapophysis remember the metapophysis is only for the bones in the lumbar vertebra is a distinguishing feature of them they are the only bone in the backbone that have the metapophysis that's extra process which surrounds the spinous process or what you call the uh, of course the spinous process or what you call the neural spine yes of course in secondary level you call them the neural spine so you can still see the neural spine in the middle the metapophysis then below is the transverse process that longer projection below is the transverse process now let's compare this bone with another vertebra which is the thoracic vertebra as you can see the one i'm holding now is the thoracic vertebra and uh, the distinguishing feature is that it has the longest neural spine that's the longest spinous process that's the hallmark then that's still the neural canal for the passage of a uh, spinal cord that's the body or the centrum then that should be the the transverse process this should be the articular surface with the ribs of course so looking at the different views of it the transverse processes is what i'm touching now that's the neural canal or the neural foramen and that's the centrum or the body of the bone so when you compare these two bones you might be asked to compare between lumbar vertebra and the thoracic vertebra first thoracic vertebra have very long neural spine while lumbar don't have long neural spine then you can also say that the lumbar vertebra have extra process known as metapophysis while the thoracic vertebra don't have it as you can see the very long neural spine there in that of a lumbar is not very long but in that of thoracic is very very long so the thoracic vertebra have the longest spinous process to compare to its size okay so if you touch your body at the back of your bone you can see a spine there so this is another bone this is called atlas this is called atlas you see the distinguishing feature is that uh, it actually lacks centrum rather it has a facet for, uh, for formation of a uh, pivot joint that's the facet for the odontoid process that's the spinous process that's the transverse process that's the distinguishing feature of the whole bone in the neck that is the vertebratoria canal look at it very well that tiny hole very close there are two tiny holes as you can see there that's the vertebratoria canal or transverse canal that's big hole is called neural canal which is common to some other bones in at the backbone but only the neck bones have the vertebratoria canal which provides passage for the blood vessels and nerves that supplies the head okay you can see this vertebra it doesn't have that uh, vertebratoria canal but both of them have a neural foramen or neural canal for the passage of spinal cord so the clear the clear distinguishing feature of the whole bone in the neck region is the, is the presence of vertebratoria canal that two tiny holes surrounding that larger hole but when you come to this one i'm holding here 
the lumbar vertebra there is no vertebral canal but the atlas have vertebral canal and the distinguishing feature of atlas is that it lacks centrum rather the centrum is now occupied with the adductor process of the axis so now comparing between atlas and the thoracic vertebra you see it the atlas have less prominent uh, transverse process while the so-called uh, thoracic vertebra have long neural, neural spine then here is the axis the axis forms pivot joint with the atlas so the axis pivots the atlas as you can see though these two are not from the same rabbit of course and that's why they are not articulating well but that should be the odontoid process now articulating with the facet of the, the, the odontoid facet found in the atlas so atlas and axis forms pivot joint as you can see there so there are surfaces on the atlas the occipital condyle and the facet for articulation with the axis remember that atlas lacks centrum the centrum has been occupied by the odontoid process now back to this particular bone uh, i've shown you this before you have seen the atlas there the glenoid cavity forming the uh, the glenohumeral joint of course uh, what we call the ball and socket joint you see this glenoid cavity is like a socket and the head of the humerus is like a ball fitting into that socket to allow 360 degrees movement okay remember you are with Sir majesty's world now this is a rabbit that i've preserved where the scapula is still intact i left some muscles to hold the the scapula intact with the humerus as you can see the joints the glenohumeral joint there still having the flesh and this one i just preserved it for teaching making it easier so that students can see how these bones are articulated so this is actually the upper limbs for rabbit so that's the spine of the scapula comparing them with the one remember some features have been lost in the one i'm holding like the acromium and the metachromium processes are no more in this one i'm holding but in that life one that still have little muscle there is still the metachromium and acromium process remember in human being the scapula of humans lacks the metachromium but still have the chromium process and the coracoid process so arranging it to suit this i've made this a, a, a particular thing clear you see the spine so this is how the four limbs of rabbit appear with the muscles holding them when we go further i'll give you the names of the muscles and the attachments but you better watch my video here on human anatomy where i used human scapula clean one and life human scapula to teach you very well and you will understand the different borders and other features of the human scapula the, the superior border the medial border the lateral border uh, and other features just try and watch them here remember some majesty's world science channel here handles you in anatomy so this is actually the complete skeleton of a rabbit with some muscles still holding the bones intact so that we, I use this to teach students the positions of the real bones because when you isolate the bones you see this is where the atlas is found and uh, it's very neat just next after the the skull then that's the spine when you have a spine you see that long spine there in the thoracic vertebra that's the bone at the back at the upper chest of course so that's the spine which is formed by the so-called spinous process or the neural spine you see the projections where they are found then if you go down here that should be the lumbar vertebra this is where it is found so at the abdomen that's where it is found the lumbar vertebra okay then showing you the thoracic cavity that empty hole that is where the heart and the lungs are found which means that uh, thoracic vertebra helps in the formation of the rib cage as you can see it, it brings articulation it have an articular facet with the ribs to form uh, actually the rib cage so posteriorly the ribs articulates with the thoracic vertebra while anteriorly the ribs articulates with the sternum that is for the true ribs so some of them are floating some are first ribs they are not directly attached to the sternum but just know that the specimen thoracic vertebra helps actually in the formation of the rib cage so these are the samples of the bones thank you for watching merrily, 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 merrily.